Hi everyone, welcome to the 12th lesson of the Crow Panel ESP32 HMI Display Series Tutorial. In this lesson, I'll show you how to use Crow Panel's Bluetooth functionality to communicate with other devices. Bluetooth comes in two forms, Bluetooth Classic and Bluetooth Low Energy, BLA. We'll demonstrate both types of Bluetooth communication in this lesson. Since the ESP32 S3 chip doesn't support Bluetooth Classic, I use two 2.4-inch crow panels to demonstrate Bluetooth Classic and then utilize a 5-inch crow panel and a 7-inch crow panel for the BLL demonstration. In Bluetooth Classic, devices are classified as master and slave. The master device actively initiates the pairing process. Once it finds the specified slave device, it will verify the slave's PIN code. Only when the PIN codes match can the pairing be completed, allowing communication to proceed. In this lesson, I'll use an LAD to verify whether Bluetooth communication between two devices is successful. After the master and slave devices are paired, clicking button 1 on the slave device's screen will send the message to the master device via Bluetooth, while clicking button 2 will send the message when the master device receives the messages, it will turn on the LAD and upon receiving EB, it will turn off the LAD. Next, let's take a look at the Bluetooth Classic code for this lesson and see how it accomplishes this process. To open the course files, if you're not sure where to download them, please review the content of the first lesson or find the GitHub link for the course files in the video description and download them yourself. In the course files, locate the code folder for the 12th lesson. I've separated the code for traditional Bluetooth and Bluetooth Classic. Open the Bluetooth Classic folder, which is further divided into server and client. The server code represents the master device, while the client code represents the slave device. Let's start with the client code. Here you can see that the slave device includes a UI file in Squareline Studio. I designed two buttons and added events to trigger Bluetooth message sending actions. Since this lesson focuses more on Bluetooth content, I won't elaborate on the Squareline Studio part here. You can find the method to design UIs using Squareline Studio in the sixth lesson. In the buttons event, the triggered action is set to call a function, but I haven't filled in the function name, and I'm not exporting that function. This is all permissible to allow me to modify it later in the code. To open the code for the device, locate the UI file. Here you can see that I've changed the action triggered by the button event to modifying a flag variable, light statuses. When exporting, it looks like this with no function name, just a pair of parentheses and a parameter. You can delete this and replace it with any code you want to add. Now, let's take a look at the main program section. Here you'll see a header file called Bluetooth Serial, which is included in the ESP32 package, so there's no need to manually install additional libraries. Moving on to the code below, the operation here is similar to what we did in Lesson 5. Since we're using a 2.4-inch screen, we need to enable the macro for the 2.4-inch screen. Additionally, the screen driver is provided by the TFT-SB library, so you'll need to configure the user setup file in the TFT-SBI library following the instructions from Lesson 5. Alternatively, you can use the user setup file that I've already configured. All you need to do is select the corresponding user setup file based on the size of your board and replace it in the TFT SBI library. The display and touch sections are now complete. Moving on to the Bluetooth part, we first declare a Bluetooth serial object for later use. Following that, you'll find the pin code for pairing and the Bluetooth device name, both of which can be customized. Then locate the UI loading function where I've placed all the Bluetooth related code, including Bluetooth initialization and pin code setup. 
In the loop function, we constantly check the value of a flag variable to determine which button has been pressed and send the corresponding message via Bluetooth. The message can be more than just a, it can be longer, like Apple or anything else you want to replace it with. All right, you should have a good understanding of the device's code. Now, let's take a look at the master device's code. Open the Serverino file. Similarly, in the code for the master device, the TFTFDSB library is also used, so before compiling, you must configure the user setup file. Looking at the code below, a pin for controlling the LAD is defined. I'm using GPIO pin 25 on a 2.4 inch board. When using boards of different sizes, please note if the pin is the same. If not, remember to modify it. Then there are the pin code and the names for the master and slave devices. Ensure that the pin code and slave device name match those in the slave device code, otherwise, pairing will fail. Thel data here represents the touch initialization information. You can find the same information in the slave device's code, but to keep the code concise, I only copied the necessary parts. When using boards of different sizes, replace it with the corresponding touch initialization information. In the setup function, when initializing the screen, this call data will be used. Here, we initialize the LAD control pin that was previously declared. Moving on, similar to the slave device, we activate Bluetooth. Here, true signifies the master device, while the slave device doesn't have this parameter. Next, we set the same pin code as the slave device and initiate pairing with the slave device by its specified name. Once the pairing is successful, a message will be printed on the screen. In the loop function, we continuously check for readable messages. When a readable message is detected, we read it and determine if it's a ZORB to decide whether to turn on or off the LAD. All right, the entire communication process of classic Bluetooth is now clear. Let's upload the code to the board and see the results. First, Connect the Crow Panel 2.4 inch board serving as the master device to your computer. Then click on Tools to configure the compilation information. Select the corresponding chip, serial port, and partition scheme. After configuration, click Upload. If you're not sure how to configure the compilation information based on different boards, please refer to the content in the first lesson. After uploading the code for the master device, let's open the code for the slave device and connect the other Crow Panel 2.4 inch board serving as the slave device to the computer. Then, just like before, configure the compilation information. Once configured, upload the slave device's code to the board. Since the upload process takes some time, I'll skip the footage for this part. After uploading, I'll first reset the slave device because in classic Bluetooth, the master device initiates the pairing process, so the slave device needs to be started first. Now, I'll power on the master device. Okay, here you can see on the master device's screen that the pairing status is displayed. Once paired successfully, you can click the button on the slave device's screen to control the LAD on the master device. All right. That's it for the demonstration of traditional Bluetooth communication. Next, let's take a look at the communication process of Bluetooth Low Energy. BLA categorizes devices into servers and clients. Firstly, the server creates a service and characteristics. In BLA communication, services and characteristics are the basic units for data exchange. Each service and characteristic has a UUID associated with it, so that client devices know how to interact with them, such as reading, writing, or subscribing to notifications. With the UIDs, Client devices can accurately locate the service, characteristic, or descriptor they want to interact with, enabling efficient and accurate data exchange. In this lesson, 
I will use a crow panel 7 inch board as the server and a crow panel 5 inch board as the client. On the server board, I have designed a UI with two buttons. The GPIO pin of the client board is connected to an LED module. After the server and client boards are powered on, the client will actively initiate pairing with the server. Yes, in BLA, pairing is initiated by the client. After successful pairing, pressing button 1 on the server board will send the messages to the client via BLA, and pressing button 2 will send the messages. When the client receives the message, it will control the GPIO pin to turn on the LAD, and when it receives the messages, it will turn off the LAD. This sounds similar to traditional Bluetooth, but in BLA UIDs are used for pairing. Now, let's dive into the code and see how it's implemented. Open the BLA folder in the course files which is divided into two parts, server and client. Let's open both the server and client code files. First, let's examine the server's code. It includes BLA-related header files, which are similarly provided by the ESP32 package, so there's no need to download additional libraries. Next, ensure that the LVGL library header files are properly included and that the corresponding screen driver interface is set in the GFX entity file. Since I'm using a 7-inch board as the server, I'm utilizing the 7-inch screen driver interface here. Now, returning to the Eno file, here are the UIDs mentioned earlier. When creating Bluetooth services and characteristics, I've included the link to the website where you can generate UIDs automatically. You can open this website and obtain a unique UEED from there. Next, I found the UI loading function and placed all the BLA-related code after it. First, I initialized the name of the BLA device. Then, following the previously mentioned process, I initialized the device as a BLA server, create a service, and use the UUID that was just declared for that service. After that, I create a characteristic set its UUID, and configure it to be readable, writable, and subscribable, allowing clients to interact with the data of this characteristic. Subsequently, I added a description and enabled the service. By this point, the BLA service is created, but to be discovered by other clients, broadcasting is required. Once a client discovers and connects to the device, the LAD status flag variable in the loop function determines what information to send to the client. You can find this flag variable in the UI file. As you can see, there are two button events. In event, one button 1 is pressed, the flag variable is set to 1. In event 2, when button 2 is pressed, the flag variable is set to 2. Therefore, the loop function can send corresponding information to the client based on the changes of this flag variable. It's quite simple, isn't it? Next, let's take a look at the client's code. Since I'm using a 5-inch screen as the client in the GFX Anit file, I need to change the macro to switch to the 5-inch screen driver. Then, I've defined an LAD pin and connected the LAD to pin 38 of the 5-inch board which is GPIO. After that, I've set the BLA server's name, service, and characteristics, WIDs. It's important to note that the BLA server's name and these two UIDs must match the servers, or the client won't be able to pair successfully with the server. All right, let's take a look at this function. Firstly, it creates a BLA client and then uses this client to initiate pairing taking the pad address as a parameter to identify the source. Inside the loop function, it searches for the content related to the BLA server address and determines its origin. Once found, within this function, there is a callback function that gets executed when the client receives an advertisement from the server. Scrolling down, you'll notice that in the setup function, this callback function is specified. When the client receives an advertisement from the server, 
It first checks if the server's name matches the one we specified earlier. If it does, it stops scanning and acquires the server's address, which is the PAD address we were looking for earlier. Once connected, the client can retrieve service and characteristic information from the server using the specified UUID. Here, a callback function is also registered, which will be executed after the client receives notifications published by the server. In the server's code, you can find this notify function. After invoking it, the client will process and evaluate the received data in the callback function, thereby deciding whether to turn on or off the LAD. In the client's code, most of the actions are performed by the callback functions. In the setup function, all that's needed is to initiate BLA scanning. As for the loop function, there are no other specific actions. It merely includes code for evaluating and displaying the BLA operational status. All right, we've gone through the code for both the BLA server and client, and I think you should have a good understanding of the BLA pairing process and how data is sent and received. Next, let's upload the code for both the client and server to the boards and see the results. Connect the 5-inch board to your computer using a USB-C cable. Click on Tools and compile the information based on the board's hardware configuration. If you're not sure how to compile for different board configurations, please refer to the content from the first lesson. Once configured, click on Upload to upload the client code to the 5-inch board. Since the client code doesn't use LVGL, the upload process will be relatively faster. After uploading, disconnect the 5-inch board from the computer and connect the 7-inch board instead. Similarly, compile the information based on the 7-inch board's hardware configuration and then upload the server code to the 7-inch board. Since the uploading time is quite long, I'll speed up this part of the video. When the uploading is completed, I'll power on both sides to see the effect. In BLA communication, the client initiates the pairing, so I'll power on the server first and then the client. You'll see that the client pairs very quickly. As you can see from the screen information, the client has completed pairing with the server as soon as it's powered on. After establishing communication, you can control the client's LAD through the server's button. Isn't it simple? Well, that's the end of this lesson. If you find this series of videos helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and see you next time.